Gathered out hunters, and welcome back to another episode of Starfleet Command. I'm Ryan Price, I'm Rear Admiral Tyrk of the Battleship Devourer. As we continue our campaign against the Rimelin Star Empire, and last time we managed to finally capture the planet of 2019, thus establishing our forward operating base in Romulan territory. We are now a threat. We are under supply, sort of. As you can see, there's a bit of a gap here. And we're able to send the full might of our battleship against things instead of just half loads and, well, no power or anything. So, with that in mind, let's do a quick sweep, make sure that we are fully tapped off on all of the good stuff. And we're going to set out to continue to attempt to subjugate the planet over here of 23-9. Yes, we've moved on just a little bit and we will take a planetary assault as the first mission. The perfect way to begin any episode. Well, actually, no, I've always said the perfect way is an MET-10 patrol, but... Planetary assaults and uh, recently re-equipped battleships. Oh, they get the blood pumping. So let's get our speed up to our classic 16-ish. And we should be able to do monstrous amounts of damage to the enemy. We only see a rock at this point. What version of the rock are you? You are a rock X, the Lunas Duo. I'm guessing it's the Lunas Duo. That tends to be a pretty common name for the Rymulus. I'm going to be escorted today by the BCS GCS Protector. The BCS GCS Protector. Yeah, that's actually right. It's also a PLPH, so it will be able to defend itself against incoming missile barrages, so we're just going to have to multi-stack the salvos. And yeah, Mr. Dreadnought, you are mine. Hopefully, possibly. Probes are ready, so probes are away. Let's also not forget to set up shuttles. It's been so long since we've had shuttles, we may as we uh, have gotten a little bit out of practice with utilizing them. We're not seeing any additional enemy vessels at this time. Uh, please tell me I'm right with the whole Lunas Duo thing. I just find that would be too much fun. And it's the Lunas Duo. Oh, we, we've officially been playing this game just a bit too long. <laughs> Alright, let's convince our bombardment. Uh, actually, I'm not going to double stack. I was about to try and double stack the salvo, and then I remembered, wait, there's absolutely no reason to do that. Because this entire first salvo is completely a waste of time. It's never going to get anywhere, unfortunately. He's just going to be able to immediately wild weasel and... Well, all of this is completely wasted. The trouble is, in order to promote that wild weasel from happening, you have to provide a credible enough threat for him. Or he could do that. Yeah, that, that'll that work too. That's actually moderately infuriating. Uh, engage single missiles at a time. We got one. We got two. Uh, you are not what I want to be sending. He did come out of the book. That, that was... Wait a second. That's a strategy we have been talking about since the very beginning of this campaign. That was the big thing I was worried about. And he just did it. From well beyond the range of 30. Oh my god, the Romulans have gotten intelligent. Uh, we are well outside his range, I don't know what he's thinking there. But we are going to be able to shoot down pretty much all of his pseudo frigates. Uh, maybe not actually. The range is long, the speed is high, and they are ru outrunning my missiles. At least the one is. But the other three, you actually know. Wow, you took it? Impossible. Inconceivable. We'll fire that. That ought to be able to take you out. No, he's going home. How are you still alive? You're not. Okay, wonderful. So, let's prep the tractor beams, because we're going to need to get in nice and close with him. Because he's going to do that little shenanigans where he'll cloak and decloak and cloak and decloak, and it'll be all frustrating. Unless we can grab onto him and prevent him from ever doing that again. He did, however, launch a Wild Weasel shuttle. I could, in fact, just ignore him. I mean, Protector has just completely ripped open his shields and is already doing a pretty good job of things. So, honestly, doesn't really need that much help. But we are going to have to get relatively close to drop a mine. Unfortunately, we're not in a... Well, I suppose our, our weapons do fire 360. So I was about to say, unfortunately, we're not in a great position to take advantage of it. But he does have to get up to a speed of 4 before I can actually do this. So we're just going to have to wait and curl in on him. And try and hold the range. Okay, F1. B for bombs. Right on top of him. Uh, actually, no, we're not inside of range. We need to be like 2 point something. Also, he skirt. Oh, we almost skirted that one. But we need to be within a range of 2 point something or other. 2.5 or so, 2.1. We've got to stay within that range of 2 point something, but outside of a range of about 0.75 to 1. Otherwise, we will not be able to uh, fire our missiles once that happens. Now, we do have a pretty decent phaser complement. It's not amazing, but it's something. Uh, wow, that, that's such a waste. So I'm going to hold on to you. Come on. Oh, that was a fake. How cute. 
Uh, wow, you clearly had some sort of defenses going on. Let's turn away a little bit. He's smashing my shields pretty heavily. You dumped another v quest shuttle? Jeez, man, how many of these you got? Uh, Phaser, are you an arc? Not really. Which arc are we on? The left side of the ship. Any phaser. No phaser, okay. Target him. As soon as the shield drops, we w or as soon as the w decoy drops, we will be able to track him. him. Unfortunately, it is a little bit of a disappointing side to be on because of that. Oh, we're about to get a pretty nasty hit through our shields. Uh, okay, all of our missile launchers are good. Fire. All weapons fire. Why are my Mervs not engaging? There we go. We need a special invitation. Ooh, nice moves. He managed to shove me off just in time. Didn't save him, though. Sorry for the top-down view that whole battle. I didn't quite realize it. Well, I wasn't presenting the greatest view of things. We did take a hit on through. Not great. All things considered, however, we should be fine relatively shortly. Let's increase the speed of time as we chug on towards this planet. Uh, I am going to increase my speed up to a speed of about 24. Give ourselves a full forward shield reinforcement. And the moment we hit a range of about 72, we're going to open fire. Unfortunately, we're probably not going to be quite up to speed. Oh, that's the range. First of the Mervs is out. Got to go a little bit faster. Prepare a second salvo of Merv missiles. Second salvo. Prepare a third salvo of Merv missiles. Drop back just a little bit so we got nice, good setup here. And slow down the speed of time. And slow down the boat. Well, ship, but you get the idea. Slow, 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 slow. Let the anchor drag behind us. As we curve onto his eyes. Just, he's, we're going to take a lot of fire. That's that's the problem. Get ahead of me, get ahead of me, get ahead of me. You're ahead of me. Wow, it takes us forever to stop. Stop the ship! Jeez. Oh, that is several orders of magnitude not good. You weren't supposed to get the shot off. Oh, just look at all the good, solid impacts that did. We knocked out the tractor beam. Hey, Marines, how many's he got left? We got 11. Uh, give him to it again. Wait for those missiles to head forward. I get the feeling, yeah. Those salvos are a little bit, uh, we're getting a lot of graphics to get out of those salvos. So give them something to think about. In the form of just massed missile firepower. Increase speed. I don't think he'll have anything left after the end of this salvo. He get that much firepower just slamming into your planet, and suddenly you don't have much of a planet anymore. Maximum speed of time. We're gonna beam people on board, and it'll be the first success successful operation there. Once we get to a range of 509, he still has a phaser 4. That's actually pretty impressive. Also kind of scary. Turn, 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 more turning. There we go. So now we're turning away. Yeah, he still, he honestly got a two phaser 4s. And it almost looks like he had plasma S torpedoes as well. But I'm willing to bet that those weren't actually there. We just weren't close enough in order to actually find out. Because the status of plasma torpedoes tends to be somewhat hidden for a very long time. So, Empire Defense is down to 30, so a decent number of missions, and we'll finally take it. We're going to pop back home. Supplies, we did take a pretty nasty hit. If we want to keep doing that and staying out for longer, we're going to have to be a little bit more... Uh, not stupid, I suppose, is the most polite way to put it. So, the BBVX is 13,596. Uh, how much is just the normal BBX? So, we lose two disruptors and two missile launchers. That's not acceptable to me. I mean, yeah, we gained an additional eight fighters, but more missiles. Two more missiles, to be precise. I think we're going to save for the BBX. The BBVX is a big, huge, super powerful ship, yeah, to be sure. But I'm preferring something a little bit more direct. And that's 13,569, which, if we sold our ship, we would not get that much. So we're a little bit of ways away from getting that. We're going to need about 8,000 because we're going to have to sell our ship if we want to do that. So about 2,000 away from being able to do that. It's going to take a little bit of time. But hey, at least now we know. I wasn't quite expecting 13,000, if I'm completely honest about things. I was expecting like 12, <laughs> at the most, on the outside. I had hope after I saw that one and was like, oh, sure, it'll probably be like 11.5. Oh, very much not. Hi, you're a K-10. Oh, no, you're a K-9. 
No, you are a K-10. Okay. You're K-10 RX. You are a series ahead of us. Uh, we have no friends this time. It is all up to us to take on the entirety of the Romulan Navy. And I'm willing to bet he's got a buddy. And the reason why I'm betting that is because, well, oftentimes they do when the situation is multiples on one. Let's prep the scatter pack. Let's prep the wild weasel. Let's try not to be quite as aggressively foolish as we were last time. And try not to take too much damage. Uh, more speed, please. I would like all the power to engines that you can spare. I uh, will also go maximum shield reinforcement because we forgot it last time, which was somewhat insane. Is that a probe? Just so we get things kind of ready to go. And all additional power will go into the electronic countermeasure. Uh, it does appear so far that he's all in his lonesome, so that works for me. All right, in that case, I uh, conduct your initial bombardment. And we will start getting started. He is uh, two R's, two S's, two F's, yep. And a pretty significant plasma deep complement. This is going to actually get pretty close range and pretty nasty. Luckily, this is just a PL9, so there's no PLPH. It does not have significant amounts of defenses. Oh, please tell me I didn't shoot at the planet. Um, we'll find out. We'll find out in relatively short order. So we're going to need high speed, low drag, and all that fun stuff. Hopefully he doesn't have pseudo frigates. I don't think the K series, or the K-10 series, has a whole bunch of pseudo frigates on board. That's normally saved for a bunch of Romulan series, but we will find out relatively soon. Now, getting through that defense is gonna be difficult. So, let's do this. We're gonna turn in, and we're gonna prepare the second salvo. In the second salvo, I'm gonna stack two Mervs up on top of each other, and then drop a whole salvo after it, because we should be able to control three groups. Well, we know we can control three groups of Mervs and the additionals. So, he's begun his defensive fire. And wait for it, wait for it. He did have pseudo frigates. Okay, there's his crash stop. Oh, we still got a decent number through. Interesting. Uh, we are almost up to speed for the Merv Salvo. This really is gonna suck. I can't not do this. You and your buddy too. Oh god. Um. Two. Come on. Everything you got. Let's, uh, come on. A little bit faster. A little bit faster on that. Stop. Ho ho! Got under it. Wait a second. Where did most of my Mervs go? Surely they didn't impact the hull. So, we don't normally do that whole solar crash stop thing. Normally that's something we save for other people to do. Dump that. I want a full second salvo going up. So we managed to avoid all of that. Which is stunning. Uh, however, I do want a tractor beam. I want to follow this up kind of as soon as I can. How much power is in the forward shield? Uh, defenses. Defenses off. Put the forward shield. Tank it for 16 damage. Yeah, that'll be good. Alright, so that's our Merv. Or not our Merv. Our scatter pack. That will be a follow up. Oh, good penetrations. Disruptors, we've got an open hull. Engage, engage, engage. Immediate follow up for that. I think he might have a wild weasel. Yeah, he does. See if he can't stun? No, we were going to go for it, but didn't quite pay off. Okay, another light hit from his plasma torpedoes. I want to get on top of him. I want to hold on to him. Hi, I'm here to play games with you. Wait for him to stop that mining crap. Hi, you and me? We've got a date. Crap, i got to go faster than this. Phasers. Um, and the reason why I've got to go faster than this is because I need to set this mine off before I can launch missiles. Uh, I've got to set both of these mines off before. Screw it. Open fire. That's what we were hoping for. Ah, got started there. There we go. Break, break, break. Oh, this is going to hurt. All the pain right there. Massive amounts of pain. We were expecting it, though. The Wild Weasel may have been ready, but if so, I was not paying enough close enough attention. Keep firing into him. We've knocked out pretty much everything he's got. Yeah, like I said, we knocked out pretty much everything he's got. Unfortunately, he really mauled us. I could probably got in too close on that one. There really wasn't a significantly important reason to get close like that, other than I wanted to make sure he died quickly. So, at the end of the day, what I could have done is just hung away from him, just continue to lob through missiles, because it was clear the missiles were working. But I wanted to see if I can't couldn't nail a follow-up pretty gosh darn quick, and unfortunately... We missed time to buy a single salvo. Also, the delay in those mines was brilliant. 
because he knew that I couldn't fire my missiles without completely wasting things. Now, what I should have done is I should have switched to the Sea Rack sooner. That was the major mistake I made. Uh, commence bombardment, please. Let's start getting our way. This planet is ours. It has eight phaser threes. We're gonna win. There's no getting around that one. So, unfortunately, we can't mass up salvos. Because we don't have the control links for it. Okay, you shot down a, a decent dish number. Oh crap, we're gonna hit the planet. All of us. Bombard this planet. Dust. There we go. Unfortunately, you can't actually take, well, destroy the planet in its entirety. Otherwise, we would have done that in the past. I mean, yeah, a planet's a big target, but I have a lot of firepower. Have you seen how many missiles we got on this boat? It's a lot, let me tell you. So a decent amount of firepower is getting through there. We've managed to take this planet again, and we are going to go home. We have no armor. We flat out have no armor. Uh, maybe hang around for a bit. Just a little bit. Try and play it a little bit smarter. MET temp patrol, excellent. A nice straightforward mission. So where we're not having to bombard planets, we can focus all of our attentions on a single target. Ready all stations and increase speed. Scatter pack, wild weasel, you know the drill. We are at full power, excellent. How about repairs? Repairs are good. We managed to fix everything in the interim. We are going to have to remember to make use of our fighters on this one because we have two squadrons. We may as well use them. So, let's uh, slowly get back up to speed. I want to be able to chug along at a decent clip, which is something that Marak ships get to do quite well. Maximum electronic countermeasures, additional power to the forward shield. Uh, for the most part, I'm going to shut off defenses. i got to double check what the key binding for that is, because we use it quite a bit. Especially in ships like these, where we have the anti-missile defense, or we have the plasma defense. Oh, please tell me you're it. Please tell me that is all that decided to show up to this battle. It's just you. All you. That's all. Right? Please tell me yes. Make me a happy person. Oh, you're gonna make me a happy person? How happy a person are you gonna make me? That's the real question. Um, commence. Bombardment. Oh, you're gonna make me the happiest person ever. Lovely. Absolutely. Lovely. I'm gonna try something a little bit new. We don't often do this. But I think it has merit. Prepare the follow-up. So I'm going to stretch this out just a wee bit. Because I really don't need all the missiles to hit at the same time. Trying to mentally think through my head how long that thing flashes before the thing goes away. The Wild Weasel, of course, is the one I'm thinking of. Three, two, one. Um... And then you. Yeah, like so. Perfect. I think that'll work. I think that'll kill him. I think he will Wild Weasel to stop the four missiles plus the Merv, and then he will die to the rest of the missiles and the Mervs. And if that actually works out, then we probably have a pretty decent firing solution, or firing mix? Salvo rate? Not quite sure what that word would be. And he's traveling, yep, there's his crash stop. So hopefully the distance between these two is sufficient. I think it is, but this can be somewhat art and science. So let's see. Actually, no, there is a definite time. I should probably be keeping track of it. And... About five, six seconds? Seven seconds. Let's say seven seconds just to be safe. I don't think you're going to accelerate fast enough. Just don't don't think it's in the cards. If you could, you survive. But, wow, we're so far away from him, we didn't even know if he had shields or not. That was kind of terrifying. Just how much damage we were capable of dishing out if we really need to. Well, to be fair, it was a frigate. I mean, we can't really say, oh, we deal out amazing amounts of damage. First of all, mathematically, we can easily tell exactly how much damage we will deal should all, all our missiles hit. But second of all, he was not a very big ship. He was a very tiny ship. He was the kind of ship that you mostly ignore. Oh, look, an asteroid base assault's going to keep us locked down here. So it's not that asteroid based assaults are annoying, they're just moderately annoying. We're being escorted today by the Custody, uh, who is indeed the ISC, okay. And this appears to be a Star Cruiser, I want to say? Because it's got two S-type plasma torpedoes and a PPD thrown in for good measure. Squaring off against a single light cruiser, it does appear to be of the escort variety, although this could be what they consider a war destroyer. I'm not entirely sure, according to this. SBH-3, the Gaia? I think it's Gaia. 
maybe Gala? Can't really see it. The resolution is a bit weird for me. Uh, so, yeah, I guess you're my target. And I'm going to try the exact same thing that I did the last time. We're going to fire with a kind of a decent delay on it. So, herbs to the first. Pop. I am assuming that I will be able to get the range on this, although that may be an assumption. So, the first four. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15. I just wanted to double the time in there just to be case. Uh, we do, however, have a heavy cruiser, although it is a KEXP, so a King Eagle. I'm anticipating the single R-type plasma torpedo, and then like, uh, I want to say four to eight phaser X's, because it may have upgraded the aft phasers, which I believe there were four of them. Oh, you, uh, custody you screwed me over. Well, the Mervs seem to be tracking just fine. I'm beginning to think that the Mervs are a bit buggy. I don't think they actually cost drone links, and I don't think they cost anything else. Alright, let's focus on this King Eagle then, since my first cell was a bit worse. They've just been grumbly. Just gotta grumble about everything. Let those missiles get on ahead of us. Watch the quad follow up. And then we're gonna do the same thing, except I'm not gonna count out loud this time, because I can understand that, that would be quite annoying. We'll also start to open the range up a little bit, just by pulling slightly away. And we'll increase our speed. And a little bit more, a little bit more, and... And let's see if that kind of timing works, because if so, I'm going to be a very happy camper. Also, we're going to set our C-Rack to single shot. We're going to take on these pseudo-frigates, of which I see two. Uh, however, they are traveling pretty decently in speed, so this could be interesting. One missile, two missile. Excellent. Resync the missile launchers. And show me this King Eagle. He's somewhere in here. He's tiny. Look at how small this ship is. This is a heavy cruiser, technically. Please don't fly behind this. Please don't fly behind this. Why is everybody avoiding me? That's what I really want to know. Is it something I said? Clearly. Uh, disruptors? No. <sighs> okay, everybody's just here to make my life boring, isn't it? Let's set up a strength three tractor beam because it's going to take a, a little bit of time to actually get over there. You're completely useless. I'm going to completely ignore you. Where's that heavy cruiser? Or not heavy cruiser. Where's that light cruiser? The Tunnetress. No, that's not the light cruiser. Heavy cruiser. We've got interceptor, interceptor, asteroid base. You're the SBH3. Okay, you are not quite as dangerous as the gosh darn minuscule King Eagle here. Seriously, the smallest ship ever. Uh, I think that's one of you dead. And it's probably the other one dead. Yep, absolutely. Hi, Tonitrus, I've come to kill you. F1. B. And this is actually going to be interesting from a perspective of where do I drop this mine? It's a very, very important question. Wait for it. Here. I'm in range. Gotcha. Control, control, you must learn control. Oh no, that's a strength three beam there, son. You are not getting away. Perfect. Um, start it all over again. Give me back to a normal screen. And focus on my next target, which is you. <laughs> that one worked out much better. We had to waste two salvos for people cloaking, but we're not about going to allow people to do that again. That was irritating. And so we shall stop that. Disruptors are ready, but we don't have a good target yet because he is still hiding in cloak. He will decloak uh, in about a turn and a half. So our phasers are ready. Our photon, to oh, photon torpedoes, our missiles are ready. And uh, strength two, strength two. Go to strength two. Ready. Hi. Yes, it's only a strength two beam, so not nearly as strong, but uh, more than enough to hold on to you. How many missiles I got left? Uh, I've got about one salvo. Yeah, I've got one salvo. How many left? Because I used the scatter pack. Yeah, that's right. Uh, phasers only, then. Actually, disruptors, because the phasers are on cooldown. He did manage to open us up a little bit. Either that or it was self damage. I don't think it was self damage, though. We didn't use the disruptors. So, hi. Good friend. Pal. Buddy. Uh, don't worry. I'm not going to fire my missiles at you. You're not worth it. At the end of the day, 
I don't need you. Oh, good. And we will use phase. He does have an attack shift of two. That's pretty impressive, actually. It didn't quite save you. It got very close to saving you, but not quite. Alright, increase the speed of time to the maximum. How many Mervs I've got? I've got two. Arak, two. Uh, you is one. You is zero. And a two. This is not the greatest ammunition load ever. So one, two, three, four, five. Plus six. Yeah, that's how we'll that's how we'll do it. That's how we do. So I'm gonna launch the scatter pack. That is my plan. So we are going to first of all get within range. We are within range. Prepare to fire the Murphs. Ah, uh, the Murphs are gonna be a little bit behind. There we go, that's all of our missiles. It's not going to be enough, but it should be a decent amount. And the forward shield needs to be reinforced. Give it all that additional power. Although the electronic countermeasures are a better thing in my opinion. So he's going to have fun with these incoming missiles. Unfortunately, I do think... He's only, he can only shoot down four, so there is that. I'm hoping it'll be the Murrows, but I worry. Uh, that's a decent combo of damage. Disruptors, long range, continue bombardment. We're just going to start augering in on this guy. Slow way down. We're going to make a slow burn. Because unfortunately we don't have any good follow-up missiles. We are basically out of ammunition at this point. So we've just got to plow through him the good old-fashioned way. Probe. Uh, probe says he's in full strength. I don't know what I was expecting. But I have hopes. So already getting involved with plasma torpedoes. But he doesn't appear to be getting involved with his PPD, which he has. So... Nice shot. 15 damage. Still shooting at him. We're still plinking away with our incredibly weak disruptors. I don't know. I'm really kind of wondering if I would prefer photon torpedoes or disruptors on this ship. Because the disruptors are great for chasing things down, which is pretty good because a missile barrage can generally open something up pretty good. But photon torpedoes would just be so much easier. But they would also be much more power intensive. Although I think I would take four photon torpedoes over eight disruptors. Just as a punch damage that you can potentially get should the situation warrant it. Which, uh, the situation would often warrant it. Hi, we're in phaser range now. Well, we weren't actually, but we will be. So, perfect. Asteroid base annihilated. As well as an ancient King Eagle, which, to be fair, actually was pretty well quit it, kitted out. I mean, that was a decent amount of firepower was carrying. An R and two Fs is not bad. And then a light cruiser, which was mostly ignorable. They both died to just a single salvo once we could finally get missiles on target. And we neutralized the tile. Alrighty, that's going to do it for today's episode. Putting the siege down on the planet of 23-9, our new current primary target. And once we have that... Oh, we'll have, ooh, actually, I'm going to have to travel back here really quick to make sure that they don't block us off. Because I want to make sure that we have that. Anyway, I've been Tarek. If you like what you've been seeing, hit that like button and subscribe. If you want to see a notification every time I release one of these videos, press that little bell icon, leave a comment, and I will see you all in the next episode.